What's up YouTube, welcome back. Today we are finally getting our Mustang 2 independent front suspension completely assembled and installed on our 55 Chevy truck. Stick around. <music> guys, if you're new to this channel, we're working on a 1955 Chevy truck and I'm trying to grow this channel. So if you guys wouldn't mind hooking me up, I would love it if you can hit that subscribe button and click the little bell so you get notified whenever we upload a new video on our 55 Chevy truck build. All right, let's get into this. So in the last video in this build series, we took our control arms we painted them up in a nice satin black. So this is the new cross member that we installed. And I don't know if you guys remember, but the, the original cross member was installed right here. It was kind of big and intrusive and it came really close to where we're gonna mount our rack and pinion steering. So I cut that out. The only thing is it left both ends of this frame kind of weak and uh, vulnerable for bending. So I took a 316 tube. We attached a collar to it at the end right there and welded it up to the frame on both sides. So now we have a nice rigid platform to work with here. So nothing's going to get bent. All right. So the first thing I'm going to start with is the lower control arm on the driver's side. It's going to be a little bit tricky to get in, even though it looks simple. But the tubes that we welded on in the gussets are a really tight fit. So sometimes uh, this one's going in pretty easy. But as we get towards the end here, we're going to need um, a little bit of persuasion. Now. If this was the permanent installation, I would probably put some anti-seize or silicone spray into that hole, just that these don't seize up over time if water gets in there and whatnot. As frustrating as it is, we have to mock everything up, front end, the rear, and then get our cab put in place and then weld in our motor mounts so that everything could be in position because we're gonna take this frame to powder coating. So after I mock up everything, we're gonna have to disassemble everything again and uh, it's gonna be kind of a pain in that. Point of this is that it's just gonna be a temporary installation for right now. We're just mocking it up to get everything fit where it's supposed to go. So we're not gonna put any anti-seize, not gonna use any Loctite or anything like that. We're just getting it in place. Now for the uppers, the back side has these little knurled portions here that rest on top of these top hats. So make sure that side goes down. Get them that started. All right, so these are snugged up just enough so that I can move them by hand and manipulate them up and down, but they're not flopping in the breeze. Guys, for the sake of not boring you to tears, I'm kind of, you know, doing some redundancy here and installing the other side at the same time off camera as we go, just so you don't have to see the same thing twice. It's exactly the same thing on the other side, um, unless I run into a problem, hopefully not. And if I do, I'll stop and film that. I'm gonna go ahead and install our screw-in ball joints. These are both the same with the exception of the washers different. This is the lower ball joint washer and this is the upper. These are the dust boots that come with them. They're a little bit cheesy and cheap, so I went ahead and ordered some energy suspension polyurethane dust boots. Um, I think these are not the right size. If you look at them, they're a bit smaller. I'm gonna open them up and see, but they'll probably have to go back. These are for the uh, tie rod arms, but I think those are the correct ones and these are not. So again, this is mock-up, so we can go ahead and use these just to get everything set up in the meantime anyway. Let's see. You know, the cheap, cheesy ones fit really nice in this ring right here. And the polyurethane ones, let's see. Hmm. They actually seal a lot better, but they just don't fill up that whole ring. Maybe they are the right size and just meant for a different control arm. Well, I'm gonna roll with the cheap ones for mock-up until I get confirmation on that anyway. Go ahead and get our uppers threaded in. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get our spindle installed on the upper control arm first. Come on, that ball drives tight. Oh, goodness. All right, so I've got the nut loosely holding it on top. I'm not going to go ahead and fasten this bottom one yet because we're going to install our coilover um, from the top first, let it hang, and then lift our control arm up and fasten it on the bottom. So we've got our very good looking springs here and they gave us these rubber cushions for the top where they mount inside the top hat right here. Here is our QA1 coilover shock. All right, so this part is important. If you look at this note here, it says Permatex anti-seize lubricant must be used on coilover threads to prevent galling. Now, that's very true. 
Today, we're not gonna do that. I'm not gonna be adjusting ride height or anything. We're just gonna get them in place and installed temporarily. All right, so we have our coilover assembly here. You have a lock nut and then a spring seat washer. Um, I also have a set of thrust bearings, which is kind of like a needle bearing that goes in here, which makes turning this under load um, a lot easier. I don't have them on here yet, but I'll put them on during final assembly. All right, so we've put our rubber cushion up inside here. There's kind of a little cup that it just slides right onto and it holds it in place. We want to extend our shock all the way up. There we are, make sure that's seated. We have our rubber bushing on top, washer. Got to kind of compress it a little bit by hand, just so you can catch those first threads. All right, so using our wrench, the idea is you want, you're supposed to, during final assembly, tighten this down until the bushing here or the washer the, excuse me the rubber bushing expands to the same diameter of the washer on top so right now it's you know it's just finger tight and it hasn't started expanding it and i don't want to go all the way because again it's not final assembly so i think if we just go a little bit So we have enough threads engaged, but not fully ballooned out. So there's a couple threads sticking up there, which is just enough, I think, for me to put this lock wash on. Yep, and I'm gonna stop right there. All right, so we're gonna bring up our lower control arm to where it meets with the coilover, take our bolt, Doesn't seem like it fits in there. It does not fit in there. Well, how about that? All right then. All right, so I am stopped temporarily. I took both of these bushings out because I'm gonna have to find a machine shop to open these up to a half inch diameter. It's just ridiculous that these don't come correct with the kit. All right, so we're on the way to the machine shop. You know, if I had a vise for my drill press, I would attempt to do it myself. I guess I could chalk up these bushings in my actual bench vise and use a hand drill, but that would be kind of a bear. It might kind of leave somewhat of a sloppy hole down the center of it. So the machine shop is five minutes from me, so we'll take this over there and see what they can do for us. Hopefully it's not too much money and hopefully they can do it while I wait. All right, so just got in the back. He done a real nice job. Um, he even kind of chamfered out the opening too, which is uh, thinking ahead. I like that, so happy with him. This guy's name is Scott. This place is Precision Machine, if anyone's in the South Carolina area, upstate. Uh, really nice guy, and uh, charged me 10 bucks for this, so pretty happy. I actually have to give another shout out to another Scott through the power of YouTube and I guess the internet and all that. I need the two C-notch pieces for the front of the frame where my uh, rack and pinion goes. And I uh, had asked on the internet about that. And this guy, Scott's like, oh, I have an extra setup. I have to just give him to you if you send me the shipping, which I thought was really, really nice. So um, Scott, from Facebook and from the 55 Chevy page. Thanks, brother, appreciate you. We now return to our regularly scheduled program. All right, there's our control arm assembly with our coil over in. We're gonna go ahead and get our caliper bracket installed now. All right, so that's the driver's side suspension complete. What we're gonna do, well, we still have our rack and pinion we have to install, but we'll start getting our brakes ready now. We have um, some rotors. We gotta get our bearings pressed into them and the seals pressed in and uh, our caliper set up. So let's get going on some brakes. All right, so we have some pretty cool looking drilled and slotted rotors that are going on this project. 
We've got to get our rear bearing and seal pressed in. So here is our backside bearing that goes in here. In the past, um, you just got to grease these. What I used to do is just put a big glop of grease in my hand and just kind of dig them in there and keep working it and working it until it got really coated. Um, I'm moving on up to the east side now and I bought myself this kind of neat little press here. I've never tried it before. This will be the first time. It's um, a Lyle grease press and I guess the whole idea of it is you just kind of drop it in there. The bottom is packed with grease. I'm not sure if I have enough in there. We'll see in a minute. And then you take the top and what you do is you're supposed to depress it. And then it just forces grease up. That just forces the grease up through the bearings. There it comes. All right, so before we put our seal in, I'm just going to take a shop towel and clean any grease off of the mating surface where the seal goes. Probably don't need to do that, but why not? All right, so here's our seal. I'm just going to get it in a position to make sure it's sitting nice and straight. And then I've got a uh, race and seal driver. You're supposed to fasten this bottom on, but since I'm pounding down, I'm just going to Leave it like that. Center it up on the seal. And there's our seal fully installed. But back over here at the assembly again, we're gonna take some of that excess grease. Time to get dirty. And uh, rub down a spindle. Don't be cheap with it. So we're going to take our washer here, which is keyed, just like the spindle shaft. It only goes on one spot like that. Seat that all the way. Oh, it's fun messing with grease. Now, I'm sure you guys have all heard about preload. Which is basically tightening it up and then we're going to come off a quarter turn. There we go. So this kit does come with a dust cap that kind of hammers on over here, but we're not going to install it yet because again, not to sound like a broken record, but this is only a mock-up and this is all going to come off again. So we're just going to leave it as it is for right now. Well, the rotor's off. Can you guys guess the theme of today's project? It's called Nothing Fits. So I ordered these rotors um, and they were for a Mustang 2 um, suspension and they are one inch thick. They're supposed to be seven eighths of an inch thick. So. You know, I'm going to put the caliper on and uh, it doesn't fit, so. <sighs> Stuck again. All right, so it's the next day. I've done a ton of research on this. They don't make, or at least I can't find rotors that are drilled and slotted for the Mustang 2 that are a Ford rotor that are seven eighths inch thick. They're only one inch thick in a Ford rotor with a four and a half inch bolt pattern. Uh, excuse me, five by four and a half inch bolt pattern. So my options are this. I can get a GM rotor, which is, drilled and slotted in a 7 eighths thickness, nominal thickness. Um, but I would have to re-drill the rotor to have a Ford pattern on it. The reason, I'm, let me back up. The reason for the Ford pattern is because my rear end that I'm putting in this car, is gonna, this truck is gonna be a Ford. So I just kinda wanted to keep everything consistent. I don't have to, that's my other option is I could just get the GM rotors and have a five by four and three quarter pattern up front and five by four and a half in the rear. That's fine. Um, just a little bit OCD, so I didn't want to do that, but I can totally do that. Uh, Redrill the rotors to four and a half, or um, that's really all my only options. What I'm gonna do right now is the rotors that came with this kit are just plain steel rotors, um, and they fit and they work just fine. And, but just for some reason, I can't get them drilled and slotted. Um, truthfully, drilled and slotted rotors are really more cosmetic in a situation like this. They're great on uh, like really 
high performance vehicle, something that's gonna see a lot of heat, this is gonna be a driver. So it, you know, I'm probably honestly better off with plain iron rotors on it anyway. I just, when you put this much time and money and love into building something, you kind of want what you want. So that's why I wanted to drill the slotted rotors. But for right now, for mock-ups sake, I'm gonna put these plain iron rotors on here so we can get this mocked up and see how everything looks and how everything fits. And we can always decide later if we want to go with GM rotors up front or GM ball pattern or have them drilled out or whatever. But um, for right now, we're just gonna go with these plain steel rotors. All right, so once again, we're gonna pack some bearings. Go. Let's take our new seals. Get that in place. All right, let's try our caliper and our pads one more time. That's a lot better. Take our slide pins. All right, so guys, you're supposed to lubricate these slide pins. Um, obviously, again, man, I said mock up about a thousand times in this video, but we're gonna take this all apart and do things properly. This is just to see where we stand. So I'm not gonna lubricate them right now because we're not gonna actually work the brakes. All right, so you guys might have noticed I have some green tape over here on the bleeder screws on the back of this when I was assembling these brakes. The reason for that is I really like these Willwood calipers. They are a uh, take on the GM metric caliper. Well, they are GM metric calipers, but they're made out of aluminum, so they're super light, unlike those really heavy cast calipers that you would normally see on this type of thing. Um, I dig the gray color. We're going to be kind of trying to do a lot of that on this truck, or at least kind of matching that look. Um, the thing that the reason they're taped up is because this is an anodized aluminum, meaning it was a flat gray finish. While that looked really cool, that dull color like that, I could see with brake dust and whatnot, that being really difficult to keep clean. So I went ahead and I masked off the inside of the caliper with some tape and stuff, some stuff in there. And I sprayed satin clear over the outside just to make it a little bit more of a durable finish and easy to wipe down should we get you know dirt on there and whatnot. So I wanted to tape up those bleeder screws really good so that no overspray got into them. Now, if this stuff is elementary for some of you guys, I apologize for um telling stuff that you already know but um willwood being the good company that they are they think ahead and they put bleeders on the top and the bottom as these calipers can be reversed you know one on doesn't matter what side they go on so if this was on the other side and it happened to be up or wherever it was in the upper orientation you always want to bleed your brakes with um, the bleeder up as air will rise and it wants to escape towards the top all right guys so our front end is just about completely installed on both sides what we have to do now is get our rack and pinion installed but an important to note on these trucks, the Mustang 2 suspension increases the track width to 60 inches in the front. So that means on our rack and pinion, we have to remove these boots and they give us what's called rack extensions to move the tie rod ends out by two inches each side. So here's the kit that they give you. Um, it's called their rack extension kit. The instructions, see things are a little bit misleading because they tell you you got to do two inches per side, which is not exactly true. Um, it's true if you're running standard length control arms, which I am not. So through much measuring and some confusion, I discovered that I only need the rack extension on this side because um, I'm shortening by five eighths on each side because of narrow control arms. So I kind of mocked everything up. I screwed on a tie rod halfway in on the outside, screwed one over here halfway in so I still have adjustability, adjustability in both directions. Um, and I held it up to the car with my bolt holes centered up by the Mustang 2 cross member. And I was just short two inches on this side, which makes perfect sense now. So we're only going to use one extension from this kit and one boot um, to extend just this one side, which is the passenger side. Interestingly, as a side note, they tell you in the instructions that you have to take these holes and install a roll pin um, to hold it in place. And you have to use red Loctite when uh, attaching it to here and to the um, inner tie rod end. Uh, oddly, there was no Loctite from the factory and there's no roll pin installed from the factory. So I don't know if they're not following their own advice or if I need to follow their advice, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use um, some, I use orange Loctite, it's not red. Uh, red is just, I mean, if you ever have to get it undone, it's, it's a nightmare. So orange, you can still get undone, but it's really tough stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the orange Loctite. 
and uh, I guess I'll use the roll pin here. Well, I don't know. I have, probably have to drill that out if I ever want to remove the inner tie rod ends. Well, we'll get to that bridge in a minute. So we've got our racks just laying here on top of the frame, got our bolts in position. Um, we're gonna use these brass standoff bushings in front of the brackets right here, because if I go right up to them, we're not gonna clear our control arm bolts and our, um, our bellows are gonna rub and we don't want that, so. There we go. So you can kind of see what I was saying. We got about a half an inch clearance from our bellows to our um, bolt head right there. So those spacers were completely necessary. I had mentioned uh, that somebody online, that guy Scott was willing to send us some of those C-notch kits that he had extra ones of. Super appreciative of him. So we'll wait on those, but we'll get this bolted up in the meantime. All right guys, so our rack and pinion is mounted up. Um, we got these adjusted so that we're, you know, kind of did a poor man's alignment right here for the time being. We're exactly the same distance from the rotor to a fixed point. We use the frame for our fixed point on both sides. And then we're dead on even on that side as well. I believe it actually has to get towed in an eighth on each side. That's what these specs are for, for this Mustang 2 setup. But I'm going to leave it just straight for now because we're not driving anywhere. Um, and the first time I do drive, this is probably going to be the alignment shop anyway. So um, I'm definitely going to need... To do those cutouts because i mean i mean you got about well maybe three sixteenths of an inch clearance between that bellow and the frame so obviously with the suspension all the way slacked as soon as there's um you know a wheel on there and we put this on the ground even without the engine or any weight on here that bellow is going to be touching the frame so we definitely got to do our cutouts that's it guys mustang 2 independent front suspension willwood calipers upgraded coilovers man those springs themselves are just gorgeous time to start focusing on the rear end we get the rear done and we'll get some wheels and tires and finally get this thing on the ground and we can start putting our engine mounts in, getting our cab back on and uh, start looking like a vehicle again. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Hope to catch you on the next video. Be good.